Wait, I need to choose the language. I have one, okay. Okay, so in my first presentation, I do not hear the translator. Is Shanice there? She was there. Yeah, I hear you. Okay. okay, I hear you. Now I can hear you. Okay, so in my first presentation, um, we talked about um, God having several professions. And one of it being a project manager. We looked at characteristics of what a project is. And we saw that a project involves organization. There's always a time element. It's a unique undertaking and it has specific tasks. That are the characteristics of a project. And then I suggested, then I suggested that a phone line is a project. Within a reform line, we have a goal which is being set. Nosotros teníamos una meta que ha sido establecida. We know now that every reform line, a gathering time, we see also the element time. We know that we have organization within a reform line. And a specific work is to be done. We continue to speak about the start of the project being the time of the end. And we see that the time of the end is rather a beginning than it is actually an end. The beginning has to be specific and clear. Because it helps the organization or the efficiency of that project itself. Porque ayuda a la organización o la eficiencia del proyecto en sí mismo. And as the beginning is important, we also know that the end is important. Um, we saw that the end of a project has actually three steps. Vimos que o final do projeto. Projekt drei Schritte. Meta matatu. The first, the goal is reached. The final analyzation. And then actually the, the very end where the team is being dissolved.
And we could parallel that with the close of probation where God, Christ, lays down his tools. Michael stands up. The thousand years where uh, the project is once more analyzed for the last time. And then we have the destruction of the earth, that's the new earth. Then we continue to speak about that every project has phases. And we talked about how our reform lines have dispensations. And we spoke about one phase or dispensation a little bit more. That was the kickoff phase. This is where all information is being gathered, where the planning and the preparation of the project um, is taking place. All the documents, um, sorry, all the planning will be documented in um, a handbook. All the goals, all the methods, and what needs to take place, everything is written into this handbook. And we compare that to when the message was given to William Miller. Eighteen eighteen, he predicts the coming of Christ in about twenty five years. Since that moment, there was no new message. But there was a repeat and enlargement. More information was given. And this is the same for our project today, the reform line of the 144,000. Nineteen ninety one was our increase of knowledge. Nineteen ninety six is our handbook, the formalization of the message. Our entire message is in line upon line in Daniel eleven forty to forty five. We didn't have a new message since then, but we did have a refinement of the Peter and large of it. And this should encourage us that God has leading up, has led us in the past. and that he will continue to guide us. Um, we also said that in project management, the, the matter, how you reach your goal is important. Uh, 
And I referred to that Albert Parminder has been teaching much of the subject that it's about the journey. That's what he likes to say. We, we should actually enjoy this journey and make others also enjoy it. Um, then the, the, the last point we left off with was actually the milestone technique. This is where in the planning you set actual dates where you will control your project and how it's doing. So basically, we can see how waymarks are controlling points. And I referred to a study which Albert Praminder did some years ago. where he used a construction model to show that waymarks are controlling points. To see if his project, his people are righteous. And if I can add to this point, when we switch back to the agriculture model, agriculture model, we see here that here a plant is growing. And what does Ellen White say about this plan? What is it like? Someone says it, it is perfect. Yes, it is perfect at every stage. So what does this tell us about God? and his project. It is perfect at every stage. God has been controlling He has his control points, his way marks Él tiene estos puntos de control, estos marcos. It is perfect. Und das Projekt ist perfekt. Projekt ist perfekt. Und wir verstehen, was Perfektion bedeutet. And we think, this is no good. But we need to learn to look at these things as God does. But we need to also trust that God does a perfect work Um, 
I'll speak about this point later because there's also something personal about this, about this perfection. So when a milestone is reached, a way mark, the project is being controlled. And at the same time, the project starts a new phase. Here, you plow. Here you don't plow, here you sow and wait for it to uh, Every dispensation has a specific work. And it's part of a bigger plan, that project. So these are very simple aspects and it might sound easy. But if we look back at the history of the movement, something which seems so easy is not easy. Because in every of these dispensation, we who live through this as a reality, it's our task, it's our task that we know what our job is in that specific dispensation. And this is where the problem starts. Two problems, what are the two problems? Any ideas? What would be the two problems we're facing in reality? Organization, equality, discerning our job for a specific dispensation. Okay. Distractum, is this distraction? Noise? So it's coming really close. Problem number one, I think is, yes, someone says we do not understand. I think our first problem is to determine what is actually our job. And how do we find out? What's the key behind finding out what our job is? What do you think? Methodology. Someone So I think something which seems so easy that we need to know our job for our presentation. It seems so easy, but in reality, it's hard. We could call ourselves farmers. But 
But in every dispensation, we need to know the right timing and what we need to do in that timing. And the problem is to find out what our current job is, we need methodology. And this is where problem number one lies. And if we're honest with ourselves, we're not trained in methodology. We had time with the elders to learn. Elder Parminder has been for some years teaching our methodology. First, we misunderstood him, and then he didn't care. Or it was too complicated for us. But the more we progress, we see the importance of methodology. It's the key to unlock, to know when we have to do what. And look back and see or recognize how many brethren have left the platform because they didn't have methodology to discern what their job was for that time. Problem number two is that when you know what you should do, you might not do it. That, that's our second problem I think we have. Okay. Um, there was a question I wanted to address. It was, uh, I read through it in the break. It was about projects and characteristics of projects. Because we have this uh, list up, up there. And someone asked about a budget. Um, and uh, the question is if the budget is not also very important to project management. Because we, we talk about, uh, if we come to reality, we know that we are to give our tithe and offerings to the movement. So I like the idea of budget being tithe and offerings, especially when you look at Malachi 3, I think it was. Yet the, um, the bullet points I gave here was the actual characteristics of a project. What makes a project 
for a project and a budget is not included in that list. But yet I agree that a uh, budget is is very important point in project management. And I like the the idea about tithe and offerings. I will have to look into that. Um, so I want to move on now. Time is flying. As I said before, uh, project management is a profession which is in the rise. It's becoming more and more important. Uh, when you look at company structures and the way how to, uh, companies used to be run, and most of them are still run that way, Uh, you recognize that it's really um, a system which is based upon hierarchy. Extern is the same as intern. I think we're familiar with this principle. We recognize and see that um, this movement has been run in the same way. It was a high a system which was based upon hierarchy. But since last September, it's about a year now, what are we teaching? What is part of the test of leadership. Especially when we look at the, the, up, the upper room before Christ was crucified. What did he do? So someone says humility. I can help maybe a little bit as well. When you want to lead, you have to do what? You have to serve. So since a year, we're starting to understand more what leadership looks like actually we see that as um people are taking positions in this movement because organization is advancing But we can also apply to the priests as a whole, because they're the leadership of God's church. If we want to lead, if we want to lead, we have to serve. So the question is. We have seen in turn and a change from a hierarchical system to a, a, yeah, a humble or a serving system.
Let's go back extern. Also the world has been transforming. If you look at project management, you will see that this hierarchical system does not work in project management as good anymore as it used to decades ago. The new approach of leadership in the world in project management is that the project manager is there, is on the same level as all the other team members. He just has a different job function. Everyone is equally important. So we're seeing here some very similar principles we've been already teaching in this movement. And we, um, I just want to show that the world has, this, has a similar approach to this. Um, I don't want to neglect the fact that I know the world is changing with this conservative uh, radical movement everywhere. I don't want to neglect the fact that the world is changing again to an extreme hierarchical system or back to an extreme hierarchical system. Okay, someone heard about what I was just saying now. Servant leadership. So, in the move, uh, sorry, in the world, in the world, you have this problem that you have companies working in a higher cost system. And in the 21st century, project management has a new approach to how things should be run. So you're actually seeing how two systems are clashing in the world at the moment. And the subject is, how do you lead? What does leadership look like? Internally, we, the test since 2014 is the leadership, test upon leadership. Externally, it's just the same. So, um, interesting is that um, project management says that when in a company a project management is introduced, this new project management clashes with the establishment.
simplemente eh, entra en conflicto. Entra en conflicto con... So let's take that to our line. God has a church. Marvani Sangan. Call it the establishment. God is the CEO, CEO of his church. He wants to start a new project, a reform line. He wants to reform something. He starts his project, he does all the planning, um, follows all the rules about project management. But eventually, or essentially, it will clash with the establishment. The old system and new system, they don't like each other. And we have often seen that in both history. When God started a new project, it clashed with the establishment. In the time of ancient Israel, we have the Jewish establishment. God starts a new project, Christianism, and it clashes with the Jewish system. The same we have with the Protestants and the Millerites. We have it with Laodicea and Ephesus today. We can also call it the SDA Church and this movement. The SDA is the establishment. But God says, I'm starting a new project. And the old system, the new system, they don't like each other. Uh, um, I'll see if what else I wanted to say. And often when God starts a new project, he puts people in there in leadership positions. We know that in the past it was Elder Jeff. He was chosen. But did the establishment accept him? No. Adventism has uh, failed the test of leadership. But on the same line, We know that since 2014, a new leadership was chosen. In the desire of, a in the desire of ages, Elmite says the following. I'm paraphrasing it.
John was the reformer, but he was not able to do all of the work. Some, he could only take the work so far. But someone had to come in to take that work which John had started and continue it. And we know that this point for us was in 2014. And our test is to accept the new leadership Remember, 2014 is a way mark. God is controlling his project. And a new phase is starting. God controlled the movement here, saw if it is level. And for the new face, he chose to have a new leadership. But so many have failed or are still failing the test of leadership. Why? Because of our two problems we're having. We don't use methodology to see where we are and what our job is. Because methodology shows us that since 2014, we are to accept and be obedient to the new leadership. Or we do see it, but we do not want to follow up with it. Extern, externally, the same problems as internally. Which brings us to our next problem. When the project comes to its close, there is a danger that this project would be prolonged longer than it should be. So I'm speaking now project management. So why is that? We know in our planning, we set a goal when the project should be finished. So why, what is this danger that a goal might be prolonged and cannot be properly ended? So often it's either social relationships or your original or your original job, you don't like your original job anymore. or you don't know what's coming next. One example, if you have a project and one of your team member was required to travel a lot, 
uh, he or she always got to stay at nice hotels, got good food. And really enjoyed working with the team and liked that job. And this person is seeing, oh, the project is about to end. Which means my nice life I'm having right now will end. No more hotels. And I need to go back to my desk job. And I don't necessarily like that. Often people in this situation will try to prolong projects to continue what they're doing. That was just one example. So it's the same for us. God's project has the danger that it's being prolonged. Project reform line. Has it ever been uh, prolonged? Do you know that the project of God, a reform line, was ever prolonged? If so, please give, if so, please give me a date. 1863, closed but not there. Eighteen eight. It's not either. You're moving right away. Go the other direction. Eighteen sixty one. You're coming close, but it's not quite there. Eighteen forty four is too far. Eighteen fifty. What happened 1850? What did the church become? They become Laodicea. The Millerites fell for the trap. that became Laodicea and God had to prolong his project and here we are. And the problem because the Merites failed, and God had to prolong his, um, his project so it would come to an end in our time. The line of the murder rights is a line of failure. Because the goal was actually never met. It was never completed. I think Elder Parminda has been referencing it um, in his second presentation today. He was referencing back to a study he did in Portugal. About how much perfection did God actually require from the Millerites?
He required less of them as he, and he requires more of us. God started the project in the Merite timeline. And it was perfect. But the problem was, what was actually the problem with the Merites in their time period? Why did they become Laodicea? So we have the Millerites. And what was their problem? At uh, this time, I'm not thinking about methodology. If, if you remember, um, what is our fourth, what is our fourth um, model we use? What is the fourth we are, we've learned about? In the last couple of years. So we have agriculture, we have marriage, and we have construction. And what would be the fourth? We mentioned marriage. What is the fourth one? Now, the test has been referencing that one, if you recall her presentation. Geography, right. So the fourth one is geography. And we know the Millerites were not really good with geography. Because what was the problem with Laodicea? So we have the Millerites here. And where were they to look? Heaven, yes. So we have heaven here. And we have earth here. And what was God's goal? Where should we look as Christians? We should look to heaven. Because ultimately, this is where we're going to go. And it is, a, it is a principle that when you move is where you look, you actually end up. When you look to heaven, you go to heaven. Because this is where you're fixated on. But where did the Millerites start to look to. It was Earth. And we see that in Ellen White in the chapter where she, um, when she, the title where she says, uh, where she talks about covetousness. We see that there were thinking about earthly things or worldly things. So what happened with this movement? What happened with that project? The team members who were looking to the goal, the end, started to shift their fixation. And they looked to earth. Yes, they, they took their eyes off the goals and became lukewarm. And why was it? Maybe of social uh, relationships? 
or because they didn't know what was coming next. If we, if we can place ourselves after 1844, I think we, we only scratch the surface in our understanding on how much confusion and disappointment there was 1884, uh, sorry, 1844. They were scattered, and um, White talks about a scattering time. People didn't know where to take the next step. And it caused them to take their eyes off the goal. And this is why the project was prolonged and was never ended. And this is why you and I are here today. We are part of this project, the Church Triumphant. Our focus has to be again towards the goal of this project. I'm saying in a, in a surface way, heaven, but I know there's more to it. What I mean by that is I know that the right way to study or uh, uh, right methodology or that we understand the number six and the midnight cry message all these things are part of that but these are just tools to bring us to our ultimate goal that we are going to be part of the new earth. So as a movement, but also individually, if we want God's pro project to actually succeed, We will have to keep our eyes on the goal. We have to understand in every dispensation what our job is, and then we're also tested upon if we do that job. And in every way, Mark, God will control this movement. Every individual of us will be controlled. So I don't want to come to this point yet because that will be the last point of this study. But I'm already saying it here. Every team member is, um, is adding to if the project is succeeding or not. I want to add to this that God was very patient. Eighteen sixty three, God didn't come because God's people were not ready. Eighteen eighty eight, He um, didn't come because 
His people were not ready. But I'm suggesting that in our generation, things are different. God is not going to wait any longer. He's going to end the project, right? Um, he's going to end this project, Earth. He's going to end the great controversy very soon. So we know that God is going to conclude all of this here very soon. So technically, it's not in our power anymore if we can prolong this project or not. But it's our power to be part of that project. And be part of his next project. And it is our power to add to the success this project already has. Because we know that our line is a line of success. This project is a successful one. Which in project management mean, means it will come to an end. And it's for us to decide if we want to be part of it. And if we want to add, how does, if the journey is a delightful one for us as well as for other ones. That we enjoy the journey and that we add to the success. Um, so I'm honest, I thought all of what I would have been presenting would have been one hour. We've done two hours and I'm not quite done yet. I think my time is up. Oh, someone says I have till 1.15. So the presentations are not just one hour, then an hour and 15. Okay, well then, um, I guess we continue a little more. We won't finish today, but um, uh, um, you want me to finish now, Elaine, or do you want me to continue talking? What do you prefer? I can continue with the subject tomorrow. Okay. Well, we'll do a little bit more and then uh, um, to be honest, I actually think this would be a good place to stop because I finished my point in my notes and then uh, tomorrow we will pick up from that moment. But uh, I could open up, if someone has a question, I would be free to answer that now. Okay, someone says use Q and A. Um, are the bottom or Q? If no one has questions, that's fine too. There's a Q and A box where you can write your question down.
and then I'll see the. Well, it seems like no one has questions. Um, this might be a good sign. Um, then I guess I'll close and we see each other tomorrow again and we continue a little bit with the subject. It, it was a, a blessing to meet with you guys, even though it's online. Um, but I look forward to seeing you. Let's kneel down for a word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. Lord, we recognize how big you are and how long lasting you have been with humanity. Lord, we know that you're closing this project in our time, in our generation. Lord, help us to be part of it. And help us to be successful in helping to help us to add to your success. Lord, we know that we are behind so much to understand methodology. Forgive us for our neglect. But help us that we take the remaining time to understand methodology and the job you want us to do now. And help us to be humble to obey this job. And that we're humble enough to serve others. In Jesus' name, we thank you for that. Amen. Amen.